Okay, guys. All right, after the little bout of summer last week, we are back to a gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful early spring evening here. An early spring evening on June 27th where the temperature is heading to probably 45 degrees at uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm in the Finger Lakes of New York. <clears throat> the mid 40s tonight. I've got my flannel bathrobe and my Uggs on to ward off the chill of a June 27th evening. But anyway, guys, the <clears throat> we will see if I can get through this rant. I'm not even. I don't even have anything to drink. Okay, so uh, we will see if my uh, if my Laranix makes it through this rant uh we're going to talk about tonight how fucked the coral reefs are yeah so i, I love how the mainstream media you know they they triple up stories they put like three stories on the same subject together <coughs> well you see how long I made it, and uh, so obviously I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and read the these stories, but so I don't die of a a coughing attack. I, apparently, the the uh, pneumonia is better, but now I have completely screwed up my uh, my larynx and my trachea. Anyway, so we're going to take my collapsed trachea and larynx to the test here. So first we have this one. <clears throat> New drone footage shows 97% of coral is dead in the northern Great Barrier Reef. At least 97% of corals on a reef in the northern section of the Great Barrier Reef have died during one of the most severe bleaching events ever recorded. The discovery was made by scientists from multiple institutions who use high resolution drone in imagery to monitor the reef near Lizard Island. This is Professor Jane Williamson said she was horrified we came out of the water and did not know what to say. It is an iconic reef and most of it was dead. <clears throat> At least 97% of the corals had died over those three months. We were there to do our sea cucumber monitoring work, but there was silence among us nine researchers. Yes, uh, anyway, where the, the coral reefs uh, are gone. I was just, I was just asking this 27 year old uh, <clears throat> if he had ever gone diving in a coral reef and he said no he had never gone diving in a coral reef and I said and you never will. Never will. If you are 27 years old and you have never been to a coral reef, you will never know what a coral reef is supposed to look like. It's just one of these things that are gone. They're gone off the planet. One of the most spectacularly gorgeous uh, structures uh, on this planet have been destroyed. They have not been destroyed by climate change. They have been destroyed by humans. Do you get it? If humans had never been put on this planet, the coral reefs would be doing just fine. Call it what it is. It's humans. Dr. Lai... Lyle Vale, the director of the Australian Museum's Lizard Island Research Station, 
said the development was heartbreaking. <clears throat> yep, it's pretty heartbreaking to lose all that coral recovery. Coral recovery? It, it, who are you kidding? We're, we're going to get back and do the ain't going to happen uh, coral recovery. So this one I really love. This is what it's come to in the planet. This is from good old CNN, the, the fake news, the coral news network. The, 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 uh, apparently this, this headline was written with no irony. This mass bleaching event is the worst on record. Now scientists are hoping for hurricanes. There you go. Ah, uh, there you go. When uh, coral ecologists are praying or uh, hoping for hurricanes, there, there, there is hopium on steroids. When you're hoping for a hurricane, when it, when it, when it gets to that point on the planet, when scientists are hoping for hurricanes to save the coral reefs, I don't know anyone who's ever been to uh, St. Croix and see what a coral reef looked like. Which, was it Hugo, I think, completely in one day obliterated the St. Croix coral reef off the face of the planet and uh, it never recovered. I think that was in 19, 1988, never recovered. So what's going on in 2024 with scientists hoping for hurricanes? Unprecedented ocean heat has triggered the world's worst mass coral bleaching event on record. A coral massacre so severe Reef experts are looking to one of nature's most dangerous and destructive forces to provide relief, hurricanes. Since January of 2023, 72% of the planet's reef areas have been bleached by heat stress, surpassing 66% during the last global bleaching event in 2014 and 2017 according to the latest data from NOAA. Uh, coral reefs in the Atlantic Ocean have been hit hardest, said Derek Manzello, coordinator of NOAA's Coral Reef Watch. Quote, a well-timed tropical storm or hurricane can bring much needed thermal relief to heat stressed corals. Yes. And then, uh, the same ocean heat suffocating corals is also one factor behind the threat of an unusually active hurricane season, which could provide a form of salvation for the reefs in the form of cooler water, coral experts say. Hurricanes act like enormous ocean heat vacuums feasting on warm water and moist air to strengthen. As they do, these storms help cool the ocean along their path, not only by consuming ocean heat, but also by churning up pockets of cold water from deeper in the ocean. And there you go. I, I love this. <clears throat> and uh, the cooling effect can spread out for 400 miles. Quoting Manzello, I love this quote, this means that storms can be a good thing for heat stressed corals that are not within the direct damage swath, he said, like is what uh, what happened uh, down there in St. Croix in 1988. Uh, but of course, there uh, there's one problem in 2024 with this model 
the oceans are so hot right now some scientists worry that even hurricanes may not be effective, said Marilyn Brandt, professor at the University of the Virgin Islands Center for Marine and Environmental Studies. That's probably in St. Croix. <clears throat> Quote, we know that stressful temperatures extend very, very deep. So even if a really massive storm <clears throat> So even a really massive storm may not have the cooling potential that it would have had in the past because the temperatures have just gotten so hot and so deep. It might take a stronger storm to bring the same level of respite than it used to. And then of course, Hurricanes are also a double-edged sword. The powerful waves can break fragile corals apart, overturn entire colonies, which is what happened to the St. Croix Reef, and significantly harm, if not kill them. And then they worsen the coral health by exposing them to, quote, a soup of contaminated water made up of fertilizer from humans, sewage from humans, and other harmful substances from humans that run off from flooded land. The runoff leaves coral open for infection and bleaching and slow down and slows down recovery. Uh, bottom line, is that there will probably be more negative impacts from cyclones overlapping with bleaching than positive in impacts, said Camille Mellon, a research university of Adelaide, uh, <coughs> which is exactly right. Uh, the planet's coral reefs are, quote, facing death by a thousand cuts, said Brant, but she believes there is a chance of survival, even if that means grasping at straws like hurricanes. Uh, yes. Uh, and then, of course, so then they have those two. But of course, they cannot leave it alone without the ain't gonna happen uh, hopium bullshit. You know, they, 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 they talk about all of this uh, where they've been, what, restoring these coral reefs for, for 20 damn years, hasn't done a goddamn thing. Uh, the coral reefs are a lot more fucked than they ever were before they started these unadulterated horseshit ain't gonna happen coral reef restoration projects and then what do they do to close out the trifecta of stories about how fucked coral reefs are how restoration can help coral reefs yes record high sea temperatures are bleaching coral reefs worldwide and putting a new focus on attempts that ain't going to happen to restore these key marine ecosystems. Here is an overview of how coral restoration is being done around the world. And then they go through all of, uh, and, and, and I absolutely love this one. So th this is one way they are restoring coral reefs, with, with, again, with no trace of irony. I love this one. <coughs> Another option for restoring coral reefs is collecting what some clueless fucking hopium uh, addict is calling fragments of opportunity. So what do you think the definition of a fragment of opportunity is in the year 2024? A fragment of opportunity. Uh, fragments of opportunity are defined as coral pieces broken off 
by natural causes such as hurricanes. There you go. All right. Uh, but I like this one. Uh, there you go. I do like uh, when the mainstream media winds up with an actually an honest comment. This is Gavin Miller, a marine scientist with the Global Reef Organization. Quote, restoration will not save corals at the current rate we are losing them. And that is the bottom line. It ain't gonna happen. The, the, the coral reefs are fucked. They're fucked. So I hope you've gone diving in a coral reef because you never will again. Uh, just chalk the coral, just kiss them goodbye. Kiss the coral reefs goodbye. But uh, anyway, I actually made made it through without a coughing fit. But uh, I gotta go uh, make a hot toddy to get through this frigid June night. The lightning bugs are taking the night off. It is it is too cold for lightning bugs at Bugs in a Jar Farm. The namesake of Bugs in a Jar Farm. It is too cold for lightning bugs at Bugs in a Jar. Ah, oh, God. Anyway, gotta go bundle up and put some extra blankets on the bed. Well, I still can. I would say get out and enjoy your coral reefs while you still can, but uh, nanny nanny boo boo, you can't. Bye, guys.